I said I thought I need to get me um I thought I need to get me respect back a little bit and and people are saying, Well, Ricky, we all have problems and you're no different. You don't need to do, do that. So it doesn't matter what you need, if it, if I need to do it to put my mind at rest, doesn't matter about yours, yours, yours and what you think. Oh, don't worry, Ricky, it's only Mayweather. Don't worry, you know what I mean? It's you know, no, it doesn't matter, it's what I need and so I made me come back and it was it ended in defeat. I picked far too tough an opponent for me come back, but that's me all over. But um but no, I um I think I was winning and he got me with a body shot and I got beat and uh I never looked back since I could move on with my life then, mm -hmm. you know. I made a comeback just to get my respect back. Um, I made a comeback to find out if I've still got it, which I found out I hadn't, <laughs> and that's why I got beat. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people were a little bit worried, oh, no, another defeat, Where's it? what's going to happen here now to Rick? But it wasn't. I never looked back, and I haven't looked back since. Yeah. How, obviously, looking back in your career, you've had, what a career, like phenomenal career, fought the best of the best, never shied away from no one, world titles, all around the world, it's unbelievable, man. Like you should be proud of everything you've achieved. You've left a legacy now. The good good thing about yourself, right, is you're learning from the pain of the past to try and help others not make the yeah. same mistakes. See if you never drank. How far do you think your career would have lasted? Um, I think I could have got maybe a few more years out of myself if I uh, if I hadn't been up and down in weight and drinking and binge eating and all, just a whole lot. I think I could have got a few more years out of my career. Um, it's not to say that I might not have performed. I could have performed maybe a little bit better because you know don't I was <laughs> I was doing it with one hand tied behind my back when you think about it, you know. So, uh, but when I look back now. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything because I think people, the fan base come and support me, they just go, look at him and he, and he and rum so and so, Ricky, look at him up in weight, down in weight. He's in the pub with a Guinness. He's out the football. Oh, he's, he's a, a practical joke. He's at the feet down the, you know, all them, all them things. I think that's why I had the, I think, I had the fan base I had because I was a little scallywag. I was a little Manchester. <laughs> I think that's why people <laughs> like me. Yeah. Obviously because of the fighting as well. So, I had the best following of any British fighter of all time. That's my best achievement, I think, through all my career. It wasn't winning this, winning that, winning that. You know, you mentioned earlier about Frank took 10 over to, to Vegas and I took 40 over in that. That's the great, but, and there's a reason for that. And I think it's, I'd like to think it's because of the, the style of fighting he has, but I think it's because of the other stuff I just mentioned. Yeah. You know, and, and I firmly believe that. So, in doing that, the reason why the, the, I had that support was because I was a little scallywag. I was a little mm. in Manchester chav, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So would I change it? No, I don't think I would have. I don't think I'd have changed a single, a single bit of it. But it doesn't mean to say that <laughs> if any of my boxers or Campbell do the similar to me, they get a, they get a, <laughs> they get a thick ear. Yeah. But I, me personally, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. But I don't want my boxers to go down the yeah. same route. How hard was it your last fight, your mum and dad not being there and Billy not being there? That was the, probably the hardest, to be honest with you, because, I mean, um, the fact that I'd, I'd had a few fights with Billy, um, not being there when I, when I, when I, when Billy, when me and Billy fell out and Billy left, which ultimately me and Billy's made up now. We've made up my mum and dad and, you know, life is, uh, is so good now. But, I mean, not having my mum and dad down there. When the fight started drifting away from me a little bit, I, I, first place I looked was at ringside, you know, when, when I'd, I started off the fight well. And then when he had started to get a little bit of a, you know, get a few good rounds in, and I thought, oh, no, he's starting to crawl a little bit of this back here now. I'd looked down at ringside and my mum and dad wasn't there. And I think that, I think that ultimately, um, at the time, because um, I hadn't made up with my mum and dad, uh, I think that was the main thing. I'd got past all my problems for all my demons and all this, and I was in a good place and I was in the right place in order to make me come back. But it's only during the comeback when I thought when things were going bad and I looked down at ringside like I used to do when I was fighting and they were always sat there and they wasn't. I think that affected me more. That affected me more. So now I know that I've made up in the exhibition yeah. bout, they're going to be there. Aren't they? <laughs> so, but no, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it was, I mean, I've always been very close to my family, close to my friends, close to my roots. That's the type of guy I was. And the main root of Ricky Hatton for my comeback fight wasn't there at ringside. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not the fact that they're at ringside for the exhibition, my exhibition fight, even if they're there or not. You know what I mean? I've made up with them now. I get on over them. The, the family's back together now. Yeah. I think if things are going, no problem in the in, in the fight, I don't even need to look there now because I know they're already there with me. Feel their presence. Yeah. 
Were you not supposed to fight De La Hoya after that fight at Wembley? Or is that a lot of shit? Um, no, I think uh, I think if I'd have beat Pacquiao, they thought that I was going to fight De La Hoya at Wembley. Um, and I think that would have been, there was already, already talks in progress a little bit, you know, you know, for that. But obviously, it was obviously a big ask because, I mean, Pacquiao was blasting out everyone at the time. He blasted De Loya, blasted Cotto, <laughs> blasted, blasted me in the end, you know. So, um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was a talk. I mean, I generally thought we probably could beat Pacquiao. I thought if I could get past two rounds, you know, and take his best and come on top. I mean, if he hadn't have got me when he did, and I'd have still been coming at him rounds three or four. He might have crumbled, but, you know, then again, you know, how long's a piece of string, you know what I mean? Mm. Well, it's all ifs and buts, isn't it? But I, I um, but no, yeah, there was talk about that, yeah. yeah.